I wanted to try to lay out what we think the deficits could possibly be maximum, or not maximum, but the worst case scenario, and then uh, what our options are for the structural deficit, particularly down here where I'm spending most of my time. Um, at the top, so you have, right now, if you take the Republican version of the budget, Oakland stands to lose seven to eight million dollars in federal dollars. And so we've already briefed you on that before and given you a breakdown of what we think that would be. In the past, as I said, the, the city, Councils often filled both senior programs and Head Start programs. I'm guessing we can't do that this year. Um, and, and so we were able to make sure that no Head Start programs closed, et cetera. So we're really counting on the president to uh, stand and with the uh, uh, potential showdown on the closing of government and everything that at least uh, some of these cuts will be modified. But even his version has, I think, between one and two million dollars potentially of cuts in these areas. The next area is, um, again, the governor is having a little trouble getting his votes, I understand, on redevelopment. Um, so uh, we don't, and then he's having a hard time getting his initiatives on the ballot. So we won't know. We thought we would know this week. That will push it back. But should uh, redevelopment be eliminated in this pink section, that's the about 28 million dollars of ongoing tax increments. This is not the properties themselves. As you know, we did a couple of triple flips and um, a billion dollars of land exchanges and sales and purchases, et cetera, back and forth uh, to protect our assets. That is the Army base, um, major holdings of land. Um, and to um, we, we spent $40 million of our bonding capacity for affordable housing, um, being that being about a quarter of what we had. And then uh, we did some other things to purchase property and lease it back to the city, and we put the receipts into a capital fund uh, in the city budget. So, but ongoing revenues uh, that we get from the tax increments to run redevelopment, that is take care of blight, to do additional planning, um, to, uh, do uh, address the issues of economic development um, are about $28 million. So the council, uh, if they lost that, would have to consider how they would fill that funding um, and those resources alternatively. Uh, so that's up to $28 million. Uh, again, the PFERS, the council has not yet told me. Uh, they had the hearing the other day, but I don't believe they'd actually make a decision on um, which option they want in PFERS. It could be um, everything from going ahead and bonding and giving themselves a five-year holiday or doing the intermediate proposal that I set up for them where they could pay $5 million into PFERS. Um, meanwhile, we'll do some other things. Um, I'm asking for PFERS to relook at its actuarial numbers to see if the amount is really $45 mil. Um, some people, uh, John Russo, is proposing that we just spend the money that we have now, um, and even though that only lasts about a year and a quarter, um, we'd have no other revenues um, that would mean permanently spend 30 to $45 million for PFERS. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but that's one of the recommendations. They have three options. I have to hear from the council which of those options so I know um, what we're going to do and whether or not we're going to cut in that area. The bottom is what I call the base structural deficit, and it's a combination of the fact that uh, for the first time in history, property taxes went down. That was $26 million for the city, and everything else is down. Retail taxes down, parking taxes are down, all sort of revenues are down. We have about 1,000 foreclosures uh, still uh, in the hands of the banks, and as those go on to the rolls, property taxes usually always come in lower than that. What we think the cumulative effect of that would be is that property taxes will be flat, for this year and won't go up. And so most cities count on some uh, increase just because properties roll over and before the foreclosures, it usually was more taxes and that sort of covered people's cost of living increases since uh, Prop 13. Um, of the structural deficit, uh, the three, four air ways I'm looking at addressing that is the parcel tax, which we put on, on the ballot, um, the, um, Probably, I think I'm not going to get around making about $20 million in department reductions. That means layoffs and cuts of programs. Um, I think there's about 5 to $10 million of reorganization things that I might be able to do, merging departments, using some one-time fundings, et cetera, et cetera. 
and I'm thinking that uh, we we'll, can get between 10 to $15 million in concessions. We're going to reopen with both the police and the fire. If we, um, I'm already having some discussions with the police. Um, we've told the fire we'd like to discuss with them. Um, and then we are, are already open for our non-sworn uh, employees, and we'll be starting negotiations with them. And so that's basically um, overall uh, the big picture plan of how we're, we're going to do this. I'm going to be bringing more options specifically about reorganization and department reductions and concessions that we'll be uh, negotiating potentially. I have to also run that by the council. Uh, so that's what you'll probably get at the end of the month. Some, some, and that's why I call it an options. As you can negotiate this, you can negotiate that. Um, we could cut this or we could cut that. And I need a little bit more direction from the council before I can give them a final, but I'm, I'm planning to come in with pretty much these numbers and all of their options in each of these categories as, as part of the budget um, process uh, at the end of the month, which is what I promised. I would hoped I'd get something more specific, but between having to respond to these other emergencies and um, not getting clear uh, second quarter results yet. Um, I'm not prepared to be a line by line budget yet, but I think I'll have one that's close. And then after I meet with the council, uh, the city staff will work on getting a, a more line by line budget in April out to everybody. But the directions will be pretty clear. So I brought with me today um, two members of the, uh, that are familiar to most people, two members of our um, uh, mayor's um, in, uh, advisory group, and uh, they they had made a recommendation, which I think we handed out, um, and that Dick Spee's uh, former um, uh, council member Spee's spoke to about. Um, they have been pushing me all along to go for a partial tax. They probably would have liked a bigger one, but you know, I, I did what I thought we could afford to do and win. win. And so I'm going to hand this over first to Mr. Gardner and then to Mr. Spies. Well, these are um, challenging times, and Oakland has lots of company uh, at the city, county, school district, and state levels and across the country. Uh, it is without dispute that all of these agencies have been um, severely impacted by the downturn in the economy. Uh, cities rely, as you well know, uh, mainly on property taxes, sales taxes, business taxes, utility consumption taxes, and transient occupancy taxes. And all of those have been impacted, uh, perhaps except the utility tax, because those costs tend to continue going up. Uh, and that was not a one-time drop in the city's revenues. I have said over decades that if there is a deficit, there are only three ways to get to balance, and there are only three. They have to all come from reduction in expenditures, or they have to all come from increase in revenues, or a combination of the two. There is no other answer. Uh, the city has uh, implemented over the last two to three years a number of cost-saving uh, measures, and a lot of those have been a reduction in staff, uh, staff uh, picking up more of the health and uh, retirement costs. Uh, they have been furloughed, and we have shrunk the organization considerably. Quite frankly, uh, I have not seen this magnitude of a challenge uh, for this city since 1978 when Proposition 13 passed. And for those of you who were not here, uh, the city eliminated 1,000 positions in 1978, closed four fire stations, and closed eight branch libraries. Virtually none of those have come back. That's what happened in 1978. There were 1,000 positions uh, eliminated. There were f four fire stations were closed, eight branch libraries were closed. Uh, there were massive, massive reductions and reorganization. One of the things that saved the city was, well, Oakland was one of the hardest hit cities in the entire state because it relied so heavily on the property taxes. That was true of all of the older built out cities. Southern California cities were less impacted. 
Uh, and the city slowly came back. Uh, the economy helped. There was an infusion of new federal money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But given these challenges today, I mean, we have to hope that none of this stuff above that $46 million happens. Uh, I am not sanguine at all that uh, we will be able to hang on to these redevelopment agency dollars. Uh, I am really concerned that that may be gone. Uh, the P first bullet can only be dodged for so long, and we're going to actually have to face the music on that. And the mayor has spoken to the potential federal cuts, but just focusing on the 46 million and looking at how the city might get to a balanced position. Uh, I'll let Dick Spee speak for himself, but you know, uh, he's not a fan of new taxes. And so to get him to sign on <laughs> was not easy. But I would say that my pitch to the community would be if we want to hang on to some semblance of a city that can provide basic, fundamental programs and services, we have reached a point where we have to ask for some support. And if you look at how this budget is proposed to be balanced, this, I believe, Madam Mayor, uh, over the course of those last two years when most of those reductions took place, there were no new taxes or fees implemented. What the mayor has proposed and the council has approved to go on a ballot is to ask the community, those who own property, to pay $1.54 a week. That's what this is. It's $1.54 a week. Uh, but what it will do... Six cents a day. Yes. What it will do will starve off some more very draconian reductions. If we're not successful in getting the parcel tax passed, uh, we'll be where the state is. The cuts will be brutal, and they will be obvious. There was a strong consensus of the advisory committee that this is a case where everybody has to do their share. Everyone has to come to the table and do their share, including the electorate. And the electorate is a very, in Oakland, is a very sophisticated electorate. When they understand the circumstances, they will vote for uh, taxes. One of the few um, cities in the state that will do that. And as you can imagine, because of my history, I'm not a great fan of tax increases because I am concerned about dis business, et cetera. I also serve on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, and while I can't speak for the board because they haven't actually had a chance to look at it, uh, Joe Heriberta, who is the president of the chamber, and I sit on uh, Gene's advisory committee, and we believe the business community will support a $80 uh, um, tax as, as, been, as being proposed. There isn't any other way to get there from here. And I believe that if we make the case clearly and carefully of what the cuts have been, what the cuts are happening now, which is greater than the amount that we're asking from the electorate, then I believe that um, they will come to the table and will vote yes. And I believe that we can pass a two-thirds um, measure uh, with Gene's help and with the help of the business community, the help of all of us coming together, locking arms and saying, okay, you know, it's, it's not unlike other hard times that we've all faced, whether it was the Depression or Prop 13, as we have discussed. It's no different. We've got to lock arms and jointly solve this problem. And everybody is very optimistic at the moment. They feel strongly that the mayor is doing a great job of getting out there fast and doing what she can to to organize our city and to revitalize our city. And uh, it's really important to the business community and to the general public that um, uh, we solve this budget problem because we, it, it will bring Oakland to a halt.